Uh, we're in the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute in front of a replica of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's jail cell, uh, the cell that Dr. King wrote the letter from Birmingham jail in uh, 1963. Eight white ministers issued a statement that was published in the local newspapers which uh, called Dr. King's demonstrations unwise and untimely and Dr. King responded to that with the letter from Birmingham jail. Birmingham voters decided in April of 1963 to change the form of government. Essentially Bull Connor is voted out. He's running for mayor, he loses the election to Albert Boutwell and the very next day after this runoff, this runoff took place on April 2nd, 1963, the very next day Dr. King starts the marches and uh, a lot of people felt in Birmingham and throughout the country that the timing of these marches were suspect that uh, Dr. King could have waited uh, to see uh, what changes the Birmingham, the new Birmingham city government might have made. Uh, and so he receives a, he receives a, 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 a large amount of criticism from all over the country. Uh, the Kennedy administration is highly critical of the timing of these marches. Uh, you'll find most of the major newspapers and news outlets are also critical. So it's not just, uh, just whites in, in Birmingham that are critical of the timing. Uh, what Dr. King is hoping to do, as he says, is he wants to shed the light of truth on the injustices of segregation in Birmingham. So what he needs is national media coverage to show those injustices, which of course were, were uh, rampant throughout Birmingham, uh, it, it just in, innate to, to segregation in, in Birmingham. And uh, so early on, uh, the, the, the campaign doesn't attract a lot of interest, it's, it, it's, it's criticized. He does, uh, Dr. King doesn't have a lot of volunteers. Uh, some of the early sit-ins uh, that they, uh, th that uh, some of the volunteers go on, uh, you see one or two people sitting at a lunch counter that are arrested. A uh, judge in Birmingham uh, issues an injunction which prohibits uh, any marches in the streets of Birmingham without a parade permit. Uh, as King and, and the SELC, they're not going to get a parade permit from uh, the outgoing administration in, in Bull Connor. And, uh, and so he decides on Good Friday, 1963, in a very symbolic way, uh, it was, this was very intentional, uh, that they were, he was going to uh, disobey this court injunction. And, uh, and, and just like Christ had picked up his cross on Good Friday and marched through the streets, uh, Dr. King and the volunteers that came with him, uh, they decided they were going to mar uh, march through the streets of, of, of Birmingham. The marchers, uh, about 50 of them, uh, gathered at uh, 6th Avenue Zion Hill Baptist Church. It's a very small church. It was just packed out that day with, uh, with people that were w awaiting in, in anxious anticipation for Dr. King, uh, and Ralph Abernathy, and Fred Shuttlesworth to show up and begin to lead this Good Friday march. They, uh, they begin the march, they come down 6th Avenue uh, north, they pass right in front of the 16th Street Baptist Church, and, uh, but they only march for about two and a half blocks. And uh, finally, they, uh, Birmingham police kind of uh, run a motorcycle up on the sidewalk in front of them, and uh, they arrest King and Abernathy and they take them uh, across town over to Southside, which is where the Birmingham jail was located. At some point during his stay, he is going to either receive word or he is going to actually read in the newspaper this statement by these uh, eight white ministers, which had called his marches unwise and untimely. And uh, he begins uh, writing a response to them on the margins of the newspaper that, uh, that he reads it in. And uh, slowly he starts, you know, starts crafting, I think this is a sort of an uh, intellectual exercise uh, during the eight days that he is in jail. And uh, the, the date on the letter is April 16th, uh, 1963, four days after he is, he is arrested. And he begins composing this and he smuggles bits and pieces of it out with his, uh, his attorneys that come into the jail and visit him. And back at Movement Headquarters, which is also real close to where we are at the Civil Rights Institute at the Southern Christian Leadership Headquarters, his right-hand man, Wyatt T. Walker, Reverend Walker, is the executive director of the SCLC. And he actually acts as a compiler 
of all of these fragments of notes and scraps of pieces of paper. It's like a literary jigsaw puzzle that he tries to put together and, and to make, in, uh, make, coherent, uh, make it coherent, make it uh, uh, structured, because all he's getting is just these random thoughts that are, that are coming out. He, he, uh, he compiles it and he turns it over to his secretary, which was a woman named uh, Willie Pearl Mackey. And uh, Willie Pearl Mackey uh, begins typing the letter from Birmingham Jail uh, on a typewriter there in SELC headquarters. Uh, and it, it, it is something that is not completed while Dr. King is in jail. They, he, they continue to work on it uh, after he is out of, uh, out of jail. King uh, purposely addresses this letter to the clergyman because who writes letters from jail? The Apostle Paul. And he uh, enjoyed drawing that parallel uh, with the Apostle Paul. He had, he had previously preached a sermon called Paul's uh, letter, Paul's epistle to uh, Christians in America. He, he, so he, this was something that was already in his mind. He had even thought about writing a letter while he was in the jail in Albany, Georgia. And, uh, and, and chose not to. So this was something that was already in his mind. And Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul writes his letters to other Christians and other leaders in the church. And he thought that that was, an, that was a very important parallel that he wanted to draw. He, he's really uh, uh, admonishing, uh, rebuking uh, the uh, white religious leaders uh, for not taking a bolder stand. He had hoped that the white church would have stepped forward and really supported, supported the movement and supported the marches in the streets. And he felt uh, very disappointed. And he, he talks about that uh, in the letter from Birmingham jail. He, he writes about that in the letter from Birmingham jail. But he's very disappointed in the white church. And he had, he had hoped that they would have rallied to his side. Uh, in, in the, the fight against uh, in, injustices. Dr. King is also heavily critical of the moderate approach to civil rights or the gradualist approach. Because what, what we're talking about here is, the, is, is Dr. King is marching in the streets. Uh, you know, he says he's going, to shy, he's going to shed the light of truth on the injustices of segregation. He wants to see segregation end. He wants to see African Americans uh, 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 get their voting rights, uh, have full rights as American, American citizens. And one of the, one of the most powerful uh, p passages within the letter from Birmingham jail is, is where he writes uh, about, uh, in a, he's, he's highly critical of, 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 of one person setting a timetable for uh, another person receiving justice, or one group uh, saying it's you need to wait, and so and, and it's real interesting. This theme of why we can't wait kind of emerges from the, from the letter, and when a a book uh, is later sort of built around the letter from Birmingham Jail that is widely published, the name of the book that Dr. King uh, is, uh, helps write is is called Why We Can't Wait. If you see. Uh, some of the early typed versions of the letter from Birmingham Jail. It, 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 that's just what it looks like. It looks like a, it looks like a letter. It's uh, about 20, 21 typed pages. Uh, it has the names of the eight white ministers uh, at, the, at, at the top of it. it, has the date on it, April 16th, and it begins with a salutation. Uh, my dear fellow clergyman. And, but but it, that's not what it was. None of the eight white ministers ever received a personal copy of the letter from Birmingham jail. Uh, they, the, the, the movement, the, the leaders in the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, they never intended to, uh, to print it off, fold it, uh, stick it in an envelope, uh, lick stamps and send it in the mail to, uh, to these eight white ministers. They, ne they never see it. They, they, they first see it after it's published. Uh, in the various media outlets uh, around around the country, and again, timing is kind of important to understanding the letter from from Birmingham Jail because there's there's some real misconceptions about it. Uh, this it, it's not released until after the Birmingham movement is essentially over. That uh, that that there has been a truce, and uh, if you look in the letter, there is a uh, a very forceful passage where King rebukes the eight white ministers for talking about how calm the Birmingham police had been in handling the demonstrations. Well, when the eight white ministers issued their public statement on Good Friday, April 12, 1963, 
uh, the Birmingham police had been uh, relatively nonviolent in uh, in handling the demonstrations with uh, with 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 Dr. King, but when people are reading it, they believe these eight white ministers are praising the Birmingham Police Department for uh, for. Uh, calmly handling the demonstrations when all they have seen on television and in the newspapers are these uh, fire hoses and these police dogs. A lot of folks are, are really upset by this and, uh, and eight white ministers, uh, most of them start receiving letters from around the country. Uh, some of them are incredibly vicious in condemning them uh, and and mischaracterizing uh, really what they what they stood for because these were not eight uh, segregationists by any means these these were eight individuals they may have signed a statement together but they all came out of different faith traditions uh, and they had diff just like uh, most white Southerners at the time they had it's much more complex they had very uh, they had varying views on 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 race and, and segregation there's a great distinction between the national civil rights movement as led by Dr. King and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and what's going on in the local movements and Dr. King uh, is is very much focused uh, again on on, on getting the attention of the American public and he needs the media to do that and that's why we've seen them uh, in, in, a, in a very sophisticated way uh, being very experimental in their movement in trying to attract media attention. They, they, they try the sit-ins, they try voting rights marches, they try sending Dr. King to jail uh, which, which uh, garners a little bit of publicity but when he gets out of jail uh, the, the media starts to leave and, and he, Dr. King is quoted as saying we have to do something. The media is leaving. We have to do something to keep them here and keep their interest. And one of King's associates, James Bevel, had the idea of recruiting school children because the, one of the major problems with the movement uh, throughout April and, and going into May of 1963 is they just didn't have enough people to fill the jails and they didn't have enough people to participate in the demonstrations and what happens is they go to uh, the, the black schools and are able to recruit a lot of school children, high schoolers, middle schoolers and even some elementary schoolers are all going to come in and participate in a mass children's march over several days in, in early May of 1963. And Bull Connor, who's still in charge of, uh, of, the, of the police department, he's the commissioner of public safety, which oversees the police department. And he kind of panics and orders the widespread use of police dogs and fire hoses, which is what we most associate with that. And ultimately what, what happens is that there is an agreement between the, essentially the Birmingham business community and uh, Dr. King and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference that they will uh, um, call off the marches uh, in exchange uh, for really some some uh, some rather you know uh, minor concessions in terms of taking uh, whites only signs down in, in in department stores and in public facilities, uh, hiring of of, of, uh, of blacks in, in various positions, uh, and uh, you know ultimate goal is to try to get uh, blacks on the, uh, the on the Birmingham police force. And, uh, and ultimately that's sort of the truce that kind of comes out of the Birmingham campaign. When most people think of Birmingham, they think of police dogs, fire hoses, and four little girl, and the death of four little girls. And that's sort of the end of the story. Uh, Birmingham is kind of frozen in time in, in April, May, uh, and in, into September of 1963. Uh, but life went on in Birmingham. And after Dr. King left, it was uh, up to the citizens of Birmingham to try to bring about actual integration. And it's a long struggle uh, for, through the rest of the, the, the 1960s to slowly dismantle what had uh, become so ingrained in Birmingham's culture, but also in, 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 in the culture of the South. Uh, Birmingham provides a lot of the momentum for the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which outlaws segregation. And, um, and that will begin certainly the meaningful process of it, but it takes, it takes several years. Uh, the story goes on. Uh, civil rights just doesn't end in, in Birmingham. It's a continuous, it's a continuous struggle.